let's solve another numerical on projectile motion just have a view of that just pause the video and say what's osgood everybody's given over here and the numerical we are good for an oblique projectile motion if at any time t the horizontal displacement is x is equal to 10 root of 3 t and vertical displacement is y is equal to 10 t minus 4 t square we also could find the velocity of the particle up to one second time of flight range maximum height and angle of projection this time we are not given the initial velocity because all these things whether it is horizontal range whether it is a maximum height or whether it's time of flight all these involves the initial velocity and angle of projection we this time know not the values of u and theta we do not know uh, initial velocity and angle of projection this time so we can't use these equations directly so these are of no use this time so let's solve the numerical with an another approach just writing what's given we are given the equation for displacement as uh, equation for displacement is horizontal displacement is equal to 10 t minus 4 t scale and that these are of no use and vertical displacement is uh, y is equal to 10 t minus 4 t scale no, I'm somehow wrong. I'm somehow wrong. The horizontal displacement is x is equal to 10 root of 3t and vertical displacement is 10t minus 4t scale. We know that velocity, an instantaneous velocity, is the rate of change of uh, displacement. So, the horizontal velocity Vx will be dx by dt. So, Vx, the horizontal velocity, it will simply be dx by dt. That's derivative of uh, x, time derivative of x, that is equal to this will be just 10 root of 3 dt by dt is 0 sorry 1 and and uh, y, uh, vy the vertical velocity will be dy by dt that is equal to this will become 10 minus this will become 4 to our 8 t so this is the horizontal velocity and this is the vertical velocity. Now the total velocity will be total velocity will be the sum of the horizontal velocity and vertical velocity. We know that Vx is 10 root of 3 and i is its direction plus Vy is 10 minus a t and change its direction along y axis. This gives us the velocity in respect form. Now we can uh, we have to find the velocity after one second. So we can take t as one second. We can take t as one second. At t is equal to one second. V is equal to 10 root 3i plus 10 minus 8 into 1 because t is 1 second j or we can say v will be equal to 10 root 3i plus uh, this will be equal to 10 minus 8 is 2j one thing you must uh, uh, remember that the horizontal 
velocity does not depend upon time. It does not involve time. So the horizontal component of velocity does not involve time in projectile motion. That is, horizontal velocity remains constant while the vertical velocity changes with respect to time because it involves time. Now, this is uh, the velocity of the particle of one second in vector form. We can find the magnitude of this velocity that will be equal to square root of sum of the squares of the components. One component is 10 root of 3, the next component is 2. Now, this will be equal to under root of 10, that will be 100 into 3, that will be 300 plus 4. So our answer is under root of 304 meters per second. This is the velocity of the particle after one second. Now, coming to the second part of the question, let's find that what's called to find the time of flight. To find the time of flight. Just try over here. Time of flight is the time taken by the particle from point of projection to the point of impact. And we know that at point of impact, the time t will be equal to time of flight at this point. It will be time of flight. So, at the time of flight, the vertical velocity, the vertical displacement y is zero. At this point, there is no vertical dis displacement, so the particle is at uh, so at, at t is equal to t y will be zero. So, using this in this equation, we get in this equation we get y is zero is equal to 10 times t is time of flight which we represent here by capital T minus 4 times t scale or we can say that 4 t square is equal to 10 t or we can say that t is equal to t and t will go we can say t is equal to 10 by 4 that is 2.5 seconds. So the time of flight is 2.5 seconds, means the time will, uh, that the particle spends in air is 2.5 seconds. Now coming to that, another part that is to find the horizontal range. To find the horizontal range. Now how can we find the horizontal range? Yeah, it's the horizontal distance taken by the particle in the time of flight. So we can uh, just do it here. Okay, we have for horizontal range at uh, t is equal to time of flight because we know that time of flight is 2.5. The horizontal distance will be equal to horizontal range. Means at this point, the horizontal distance will be this, the horizontal range. The particle spans 2.5 seconds from this point to this point and it covers this much of distance which is the horizontal range. So horizontal range is the distance covered by the particle during the time of flight. So uh, writing here r instead of uh, x because at this time x is equal to r. So writing r, r will be equal to, in this equation, r will be equal to tan root 3 times 10 root 3 times t. We know that t is 2.5. So now this will be 25 root 3. 25 root 3. This much of meters will be the horizontal range. Now coming to another point that is to find the maximum height. 
maximum height. We can solve this in many ways. One thing is to uh, maximum height is this much of distance, but uh, this much of distance is the maximum height. One thing is, one way of solving this question is like this. The particle wave take half time from point of projection to the highest point. Because we know that time of ascent is half that of time of flight. Similarly, time of descent is also the half of time of flight. We are here concerned with the time of ascent. Time of ascent is the half of that half that of time of flight. So we can write So we can write this is a fourth form. Uh, time of ascent is equal to half that of time of flight, that is 2 by 5 by 2, that is 1.25 seconds. Maximum height is the height achieved by the particle during time of ascent. So we can write at T is equal to time of ascent, which is equal to 1.25 seconds. At this time, H, Y will be the maximum. The vertical distance will be the maximum. So, Y will be equal to high, maximum height at, at time of ascent, at half the time of flight, the after half trip of this trajectory, the particle will attain the maximum height. That's what we wrote here. So writing this in y will be equal to h, y will be equal to h is equal to 10 times, and t, t is time of ascent this time, it will be 1.25 minus 4 times t square, 1.25 square. Oh, we can get h is equal to 12.5 minus 4 into then when you multiply 1.25 into 1.25 it will become i think 1.5625 something like that or h is equal to 12.5 minus it will become <clears throat> 4, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, something like that. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, this much of meters so the particle will this is the expression for maximum height so the particle will go 6.25 meters high we can solve it uh, another way that is uh, at the highest point the vertical velocity is zero so we can put this zero here we will get t that will be equal to this much 1.25 that we can use in this equation to get the horizontal range now, the, our last part is to find the angle of projection. And we know angle of projection is uh, angle of projection. Now, we know that uh, tan of angle of projection is equal to uy or u x where u i is the vertical component of initial velocity and u x is the initial component of in uh, sorry uh, horizontal component of initial velocity but um, uh, but we are not given here a u y and u x how can we find so first uh, we 
we'll try to find u y and u x taking uh, this equation first since uh, we have uh, we have v y is equal to uh, 10 minus 8 t when this is compare comparing with uh, comparing this with the v y is equal to u plus a t it's vertical version here we will get that we have here 10 instead of u y so we can get that u y is 10 here u y is 10 10 units Mm. The next thing is taking this equation vx is equal to also vx is equal to how much 10 root 3 when it is when it is compared with vx is equal to ux plus axt here we what we find what we find here there is no term containing t in this expression. So this term is absent. This term is absent here. So This thing will be then the horizontal velocity so that the initial velocity and we know that uh, the horizontal velocity does not change with respect to time horizontal velocity does not contain time it does not contain time so it will not change with respect to time the horizontal velocity will be same it will be constant throughout and we know that horizontal velocity for a horizontal motion is a uh, uniform motion so its velocity will be same as that of initial horizontal velocity so the final horizontal velocity will be equal to initial horizontal velocity with that we get here that is u x will be also equal to what is vx that stand is for 10 root of 3 so we will get here ux ux is how much 10 root of 3 now we can use the values of uy and ux to find To find the angle of projection, we know that tan of angle of projection is equal to u y over u x, and we know that tan of theta is equal to u y. We know that u y is tan, that is tan u y is tan, and u x is tan root of three. Tan root of three, tan and tan will go. We'll get theta is equal to taking tan to the other side, tan inverse of one over root of three. We'll get this thing or we and we know that tan inverse of one over root of three that is 30 degrees because we know that tan of 30 is one over root of three so what we will get here is tan inverse of this much is tan of 30 tan of 30 is root of one over one over root of three so We'll get 10 inverse and 10 will go. It will become 30 degrees. So this is the angle of projection. Such type of questions, while we were not given the initial velocity, not the angle of projection, that we could have used in the standard for life for maximum uh, height, in the time of flight, horizontal range, and all that. But we do not have these things given. So such questions, while we solve the problem by uh, an alternate method other than using the direct formula, these are called conceptual questions.